Hello there, my name is James Gibson and welcome to my second tutorial on Visual Basic and how to create a basic calculator uh, using, uh, using Visual Basic. Uh, and in particular, how to, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, variables and their role in Visual Basic and programming in general. So we're going to get started here by opening up Visual Basic. And I'm going to open up my program that we did last time, which I can find right here. You might have to go look it up in your file folders or uh, by going File Open. Uh, so I'm going to open up my project here. And here's my project from last time. So last time uh, we worked on laying out the buttons, which you can see here, uh, which run from uh, 0 to 9, including a decimal button and a negative uh, sign button. Uh, as well as four operations buttons. So these are the four math functions we're going to create. A clear button and an equals button. And lastly, we have a text box, known as text box one, and a label known as label one, which currently says first value. All right, so we're going to go jump into the program now. We're going to go over to form1.vb. You can also get, get to this by double clicking pretty much anywhere on the, uh, on the program. So it's going to take you to something that looks a lot like this. Now, you may not have all of these subroutines here. Do not worry about that. They are um, These are created by Visual Basic as you double click on any element in your design. So for example, if I go to button three and double click on it, it's going to create a new subroutine called button three click, which is responsible for handling uh, anything that, that happens when that button is clicked. So don't worry if you don't have all of these. You're not going to, you're not, you don't need to type them in they will appear basically as you need them uh, and uh, just follow along with what I'm doing and uh, uh, you'll you'll end up with all the same subroutines as I will. Uh, you will not have to do it typing in any of this complicated stuff. Don't worry about that. We're in, first off, we're just going to go right to the top of our program and we're going to create what we call global variables. So I'm just going to create a comment here. So this is called a comment. These are created by using a single quote at the front of it. Uh, it is, this is a really valuable thing to start doing, is to start writing out what you're doing before you do it. It will save you gallons of time as a programmer as things get more complicated, okay? So make sure you start commenting your work early and uh, comment often. It's going to save you a lot of time. All right, so uh, what we're talking about today are variables. Now, variables are, um, are places in the, that are, are something that we use in programming to store critical pieces of information that our programs are going to need in order to function. Um, now, in our case, we've got a calculator. And let's have an example calculation. So let us say our example calculation is 5 times 4 equals 20. Okay? Um, now, what happens is, uh, when we actually run our program, we have no idea if so what someone's going to type in, in, in into our calculator. Now we're going to build our calculator, so it's going to do a basic little calculation like this, um, where it's going to be uh, uh, one number, some sort of math, whoops, sorry, some sort of math operation about it. In this case, I've got multiply, but it could be uh, adding, uh, deducting, whatever. Uh, and a second number, oops, keeps wanting to do move stuff here. A second number, and uh, and finally our answer. Okay. So what we're going to do is since we when we start getting information entered in our calculator, we we uh, we don't know exactly what these numbers are. We need to store these numbers as they come into our calculator, so that we can use them when we finally get to the when some when someone finally hits e the equal sign, and uh, we're going to go ahead and create our answer. So, how do we store this information? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of variables. So the um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, to start off with, is create something that's going to store a number, okay? Um, and we, we create these by writing out what we call dim, which means dimension, uh, uh, which just is a keyword that tells the computer, I need to store something, okay? Uh, now, the computer doesn't know what yet. We're going to get to that in just a second. But it tells the computer, okay, pay attention to this next, to, to what I'm writing here. Uh, it, I'm going to give you, uh, first off, I'm going to give you a name of whatever you're going to call your uh, variable. And you can choose whatever whatever name you like, but you're going to have to use it all the way through the program. Uh, I'm going to call my, my first variable first, because what this is going to be is 
I'm thinking about it like this. If someone is entering 5 times 4 equals 20, this is going to be the first number they enter. So this is going to store the value 5 here. Now, what I'm going to do is, and now that I've written dim first, I need to also give it what we call a type. And we do that by writing as, uh, and the type tells the computer what kind of information we're going to be storing inside of our variable. Uh, there are many, many different types uh, that are out there uh, for various kinds of uh, purposes, and you're going to learn as you continue on programming what the, the strengths and weaknesses of uh, various types, and you'll have to decide which ones you want to use uh, as you program. Uh, in this particular case, what we want to do is store uh, a number of some kind. So I'm going to write down dim first as double. Now, double is, seems like a strange name to put, have down as, as, as a number, but, um, but the, the reason why we are calling this one a double is because there are many different kinds of numbers that are out there. Uh, and how much space the computer needs to store them varies. Uh, for example, uh, do to type to numbers. Uh, so first off, the most basic type of number uh, of type, which is what we call this, so this is called a type, uh, is the integer. So these are like negative three, four, zero, one, that kind of thing. Uh, where they're whole numbers, they can be negative, but they don't have decimals or anything that associated with them. If we want to have a decimal, we have to use a different type. Uh, and this gives a, this tells the computer to store enough information to store that decimal place. And that is why we're using what we call a double. And oh, for curiosity's sake, it's called double because um, uh, it's, it's basically twice the size uh, of the integer. Uh, so it's, it's double the size of an integer when you again, it comes down to the computer's memory. That's why it's called a double, but pretty much it just means a decimal number. So this will be like 1.23, uh, negative 4.56, anything like that. There are other kinds, such as longs, uh, which are just huge decimal numbers. Um, you're pretty much not going to need to worry about these, um, but there are a lot of other types, but uh, types of, ver of uh, uh, variables out there, uh, e even for numbers, but we're not going to use them right now. We're just going to focus on what we've got right in front of us. So we're going to be basically picking from, like, long's way too big. So uh, the only two types of num numeric variables we're going to use in this project are integers and doubles. So uh, now the reason why I said dim first as double is because while I might have 5, .5, uh, 5 times 4 equals 20 here, I might have gotten 5.25. I want to have the capacity to handle the decimal number as well. So that's why I'm saying dim first as double. All right. Now I'm going to create a second. Um, so once again, in our calculation, I'm going to go along with my decimal version of it here. Um, I'm going to say 5.25. Uh, actually, I'm just going to take that to black. But basically, there's always going to be a, you can always kind of assume there's going to be a decimal there. Even if it's never typed in, the computer will automatically assume there's a decimal number there of some kind. It's just to say 5.0 if you give it 5. Um, so in, as back to our example, so my first number is, is where the 5 is going to get stored. So the 5 here is going to end up going into my first. The 4 is going to go into my second. And we're finally going to have a third one, which is going to be our, answer, our final answer, which is where that 20 is going to go. I'm going to call my final as double, because it'll be 20.0. All right, so those are our first three uh, variables. Uh, next, we're going to have uh, one additional variable, which we're, we're going to call our operation variable. And its job is to tell us what kind of mathematical operation we're doing. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to have, uh, and I put this into the, uh, the tutorial that you'll have there. Um, oops, sorry, I'll do that in here. And we're going to actually make this one an integer. And the reason why we're doing that is that it's going to, that it's only going to have one of four values. It's going to have, um, going to have one if multiplying, uh, two if dividing, 
three is adding and four uh, is subtracting. Okay, so that's that role. That that's the role of the operation, uh, the operation variable. But since we don't, we we're basically saying it's only going to have either one, two, three, or four written into it. It doesn't need to have that decimal capacity. It just needs an integer. So that's why we say add is integer. All right. So uh, that does it for uh, for setting up variables for our program. Um, and what we've created here is what we call what we call global variables. These are variables that are going to be available throughout your entire program. Um, and there is another kind of variable which we call a local variable, which is created inside a subroutine, like right down here. Um, uh, we could create local variables here. And local variables work exactly, you create them exactly like you would uh, a global variable, except that they only exist while the subroutine is happening. As soon as that subroutine is over, anything that's stored in them gets wiped away. Okay. Uh, and all right, so I got one last thing I'm going to talk to you about, and that is how to use um, uh, variables. So variables, if you want to store information into a variable, the uh, whatever you're storing into, uh, where you're, the location that you're storing into goes on the left, Whatever you're storing into it goes on the right. So if I wanted to put the number five into first, I would go like that. Okay. Uh, and that says take five stored into first. Likewise, I could have second equals four, for example. Uh, and this would store the number four into my second variable. Um, now this is not where we're going to be doing this in the in the actual program, so don't worry about calc, uh, uh, programming on any of this stuff. You're going to uh, you're going to see where that's going to start working as soon as we get down to the equals button. All right, so um, uh, so that's storage. There's also they can, they're also can be used for tests, which we will get to uh, slightly later when we get down to the equals button as well. Uh, so we will come back and visit these ones, but for now this is the important bit you need to put together. Okay. So set up those variables, and uh, then I will meet you up with you again, and we'll take care of the number buttons in tutorial three. All right. Uh, so I will cut things off there, so I'll talk to you then. Okay, thanks.